This film is set in the Iraq War, focusing on an American sniper, Staff Sergeant Shane Matthews. Along with his comrade, Sergeant Alan Eyes Isaac, they find themselves cornered by an enemy sniper in a highly disadvantageous position. The most harrowing aspect is their only shelter, an aging wall barely offering protection. Matthews and Isaac are up against Juba, a legendary Iraqi sniper known for unmatched precision and patience. This intense confrontation isn't just a battle, it's a struggle against a near-mythical opponent. Will they have what it takes to outwit this formidable adversary for a gripping insight into this high-stakes mission? Watch the movie recap, but be warned, it's filled with spoilers. The story unfolds in 2007, a time when the American-Iraq War was declared over. Yet, ironically, on this very day, American soldiers Eyes and Matthews are trapped in a war zone. Their mission was to investigate sniper attacks in a pipeline construction area. The scene is grim, with multiple victims shot in the head. For nearly 20 hours, they wait. Matthews, feeling the coast is clear, suggests to Eyes that they approach the victims to retrieve a radio. Initially, Eyes disagrees, cautioning Matthews to wait longer, especially since he had heard of Juba, the infamous Iraqi sniper who might be responsible for these casualties. But Matthews, eager to return to base, insists on going alone. From his hiding spot, Eyes watches Matthews every move, sometimes chuckling at his comrades' antics. However, laughter turns to horror when an enemy bullet suddenly strikes Matthews. Witnessing this unexpected event, Eyes is shocked and panics. Without hesitation, he rushes out from his cover to aid Matthews. Amidst the chaos, Eyes, wounded and desperate, scrambled for cover behind the crumbling wall his leg bleeding profusely. The unexpected volley of bullets had forced him to leave Matthews, who was also injured and vulnerable. Gritting his teeth in pain, Eyes tried to establish contact with headquarters using his radio. His fingers fumbled with the device, only to find the antenna bent and useless. A casualty of a sniper's precise shot. The realization sank in. They were isolated, with no immediate help on the way. Meanwhile, Matthews, disoriented and in pain, called out to Eyes. Despite his injury, he was determined to retaliate. He asked Eyes about the sniper's whereabouts, his voice laced with the intent of ending the threat with a single, well-aimed shot. But Eyes, equally unaware and anxious, advised against it. The sniper's position remained a mystery, and any attempt by Matthews could expose him to further danger. Eyes feared the worst, that Matthews might fall before even spotting the hidden assailant. In this dire situation, with limited options and the enemy's location unknown, both soldiers faced a critical decision. The risk of moving could attract more gunfire, but staying put meant waiting for a rescue that might not arrive in time. Their survival hinged on their next move in this dangerous game of cat and mouse. Enduring severe pain from his grievously bleeding knee wound, Eyes tried to determine the sniper's location by making a hole in the wall to place a telescope. As Eyes read his telescope, Matthews had already fainted. Eyes, uncertain about what to do next, decided to remove the bullet lodged in his knee and wrap it with a bandage. But, having lost too much blood, he too eventually passed out. Unsure of what to do next, he decided to remove the bullet from his knee and immediately bandaged it. However, due to excessive blood loss, he eventually fainted. After an unknown period of unconsciousness, Eyes was jolted awake by someone contacting him on his local radio inquiring about his status. He reported the events, where both were injured and cornered by an enemy sniper and requested immediate evacuation. To confirm his location, the person on the radio instructed Eyes to stand and fired his pistol. Eyes, thinking it foolish as it could lead the enemy sniper to shoot him, chose not to follow through. During their conversation, a particular detail made Eyes suspicious. The person on the radio mistakenly referred to a wrong military rank. His suspicion didn't end there, especially as he began to notice the accent of the person on the radio didn't sound authentically American. And then it all unraveled. The person on the radio was not an American ally, but the sniper, who had successfully shot and incapacitated both of them. Realizing he had been deceived, I started to ignore the conversation and tried to use his radio again. However, the sniper threatened to shoot Matthews in the head if Eyes deviated from the conversation. Left with no other choice, Eyes began to listen and engage in the conversation. Amidst the talk, he widened a hole in the wall to pinpoint the sniper's location. He even calculated the distance from where the shots were fired. 
Surprisingly, the sniper spoke cordially, merely seeking the conversation and wishing to introduce himself as an ordinary citizen. But Eyes, aware that he was the enemy, was not easily swayed. He also fabricated stories about his background. Then, the sniper revealed that he could shoot precisely from a distance, evidenced by the targeted radio transmitter and the specific location chosen to make Eyes suffer from thirst. But that wasn't all. Eyes also learned the reason he wasn't killed immediately upon leaving his hiding spot. It was all to make him bleed out and die slowly. These revelations further enraged Eyes, exhausting his patience. In a state of intense irritation, Eyes quietly estimated his remaining ammunition, including the weapons at his disposal. To confirm his suspicions, he baited the man by mentioning the weapon he used. But the sniper was no fool and chose to lie about his armament. In the midst of their conversation, Eyes heard a metallic scraping sound, peering through his binoculars. He surmised the sniper might be hiding atop a pile of waste. Eyes also began to suspect that the sniper was Juba, a legendary Iraq sniper known for his deadly skills, who had once killed 75 American soldiers undetected from his concealed firing positions, to ensure that the elusive Juba was indeed lurking in the pile of debris. Eyes hatched a plan to create a decoy with his helmet, hoping to catch a glimpse of the sniper's bullet. Alas, the helmet, intended to divert attention, tumbled down instead. Juba's laughter echoed, mocking Eyes' failed attempt. For the second time, Eyes succumbed to unconsciousness. A fierce gust of wind jolted him back to reality. In this dire state, he resolved to seize a radio line nearby, exploiting the howling wind to obscure Juba's sight. With considerable effort, Eyes managed to grab a backpack and, miraculously, the radio. Bullets whizzed past. But as usual, Juba was bluffing, and Fortune smiled on Eyes. Discovering a remnant of drinking water in the backpack, Eyes began to quench his thirst. Before he could finish, panic gripped him again as enemy fire shattered the wall beside him. Once more, Juba boasted that his shots, deliberately missed, were meant to intimidate and destroy Eyes' vital equipment. Indeed, Eyes realized that his binoculars had been shot and rendered useless. In the height of the turmoil, Eyes' attention was suddenly drawn to a startling realization. Matthews, against all odds, was still clinging to life. The discovery brought a glimmer of hope amidst the prevailing chaos and confusion. To keep Juba oblivious, Eyes gestured for Matthews to move stealthily. He then urgently informed Matthews of Juba's location amidst the waste pile. As Eyes conversed with Juba to distract him, he inadvertently left his radio on, betraying their plan. Fortunately, Matthews was already in position, unleashing a barrage of bullets towards the debris. Despite Matthews' determined efforts to overcome the situation, Juba swiftly and decisively struck back. This swift retaliation by Juba resulted in Matthews being helplessly sprawled out in front of Eyes, marking a grim turn of events. Despairing and feeling hopeless, Eyes heard the radio's hiss and began to repair its antenna with a replacement he had found earlier. Miraculously, the radio crackled to life, connecting with headquarters. Hope surged in eyes, a flicker of salvation. But abruptly, the frequency was jammed, and Juba seized the conversation with headquarters, deceitfully assuring them that all was well. Hearing Juba's exchange with headquarters, eyes realized Juba had not only hijacked the radio, but had also lured American forces into a deadly trap. For the third time, eyes fainted when he awoke in the evening. He tried contacting Juba again to no avail. Determined, Eyes decided to arm himself with Matthew's weapon, aided by a rope he found. Meanwhile, two helicopters appeared on the horizon, anticipating that they would be annihilated by Juba. Upon arrival, Eyes resolved to strike first. Weapon ready, he daringly demolished the remaining wall, causing Juba to struggle as his vision was clouded by dust. Amidst the swirling debris, Eyes spotted a flash of gunfire and, without hesitation, fired towards the gleam. The story successfully concludes with Durasa neutralizing Juba. As Eyes finally stands up, the rescuers secure the perimeter. In a moment of urgency, Eyes warns that there are still enemies hidden in the debris, but his voice is drowned out by the roaring helicopters. During their flight mission over the vast waste piles, the situation takes a sudden and dire turn. Gunfire bursts out of nowhere aggressively chasing after the helicopters. In a tragic sequence of events, this relentless assault leads to both helicopters being shot down, resulting in a catastrophic crash that entombs all the soldiers on board. 
The following day brings a dramatic twist as the command center makes a concerted effort to re-establish communication with the helicopters. In an unexpected development, Juba astoundingly manages to seize control of the radio communication again, showcasing his cunning and strategic prowess. Okay, guys, that's the incredible tale of the Iraqi sniper known as Juba. What do you think about the ending? Will Juba call for help, leading to another massacre of the American soldiers who come to his aid? Or will he put an end to the carnage? Share your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Thanks for watching.